Hi, I'm Miss Ball, and I have a sculpture project for you today. But before we get started with the sculpture, let's take a look at a famous sculptor named Alexander Calder. You ready? All right, let's take a look. Alexander Calder was a modern artist, and he grew up in Pennsylvania. In this picture, you can see Calder with one of his sculptures. This sculpture is a mobile. A mobile is a sculpture that moves, and it's what he is most famous for making. Calder was also known for his public art. Public art is art for everyone, and it's usually outside, and nobody has to pay to see it. If you see a big red metal sculpture like this one, there's a good chance it might be a Calder. If you live in Philadelphia, you might recognize this Calder sculpture. Calder was an artist his entire life. When he was only four years old, he completed his first sculpture, which was a clay elephant. Calder was often inspired by animals. Does this sculpture remind you of any animals? If you go to Washington, D.C., you can see this sculpture. The title of this translates to the red horse. Does it look like a horse to you? Chicago is home to this sculpture called Flamingo. What shapes do you see? This sculpture is made out of tin cans and wire. Now that we're making our artwork at home, I think we'll be using a lot of recycled materials. To make your own sculpture, you'll only need a few supplies. You'll need a piece of cardboard, something that's not too thick so that you can cut it fairly easily. This is just um, a box from um, some drinks. Also, you'll need a graphite pencil, a marker, and a pair of scissors. This project doesn't require any tape or glue. Are you ready to make your sculpture? Let's get started. For this project, a box like um, a cereal box or a box from crackers could work well too. Any, any cardboard that's thin. Here you can see me drawing out with pencil some shapes that I saw when I was looking at Calder's sculptures. A lot of his big red sculptures had kind of arc, these arch shapes that um, will make really good legs for my sculpture. You might think about the different shapes that your animal or creature that you're gonna make will need. This can be a spine or a back. You can see here I've drawn out some other shapes too, ones that I'll use for a neck and a tail and maybe some more legs. I am taking a marker and I'm tracing over my shapes to make it a little bit easier for me to see when I cut these shapes out. Uh, you could skip this step if you want. Now I'm getting out my scissors so that I can cut out these shapes. And I wanted to remind you that when you're holding scissors or walking with scissors, this is the safe way to carry them. When you're holding your scissors, your thumb is going to go in the little hole and your fingers will go in the bigger one. When you open your hand, it opens the scissors, and when you close your hand, it closes the scissors and cuts the cardboard. It makes sense to cut the big cardboard into smaller pieces before cutting out each shape because it makes it easier to turn the cardboard. You will notice one of my hands is cutting with scissors and the other hand is turning the cardboard. This can be a little bit tricky because your hands are doing two different things. You can see I have a couple of shapes here that have holes inside them, and that can be really difficult to cut out with scissors. So I'm using a hole punch here to get the hole started. So I'm making a little hole, and then I'll go back in with the scissors and cut a bigger hole. These shapes that I'm cutting out now with a hole in them will be the eye for my animal. Now that the pieces are cut out, I'm going to try to put them together and get my animal to stand up. I'm going to start with the legs first. Since we're not using any glue or any tape for this, to get our pieces to connect or stay together, we're gonna to create little slits. So with the red marker here, I'm drawing some lines on these shapes and I'm gonna cut these lines 
and then I'll be able to fit the pieces together. The two rainbow shapes are each going to have one slit and this um, this will be the back here and I'm going to have two slits on this one. So this will be the foundation for my animal. And you can see I'm not cutting all the way across, just on the red part. Now you can see there's a little space there and that's where I'll slide the other pieces of cardboard in. You'll want to be sort of gentle when you put the pieces together and you can kind of wiggle them and press them until both parts slide in and it should be a pretty sturdy connection. Once I have all four of these legs connected into the back, I'm hoping that this structure will be able to stand up all by itself. And it looks like it is. My animal is going to be a dinosaur, like a brontosaurus or brachiosaurus, so its body is going to need to be a little bit longer. And here you can see I'm kind of measuring where I'm going to connect it, and I'm drawing with my marker the places where I'm going to cut and make the slit so I can connect it easily. Trying to get my sculpture to stand up is a trial and error process where you might have to try something and see if it works and if it doesn't work you might have to try something different and I'll try adding another piece to keep stabilizing the base of the sculpture. Now my sculpture seems to be standing up pretty well on its own and I'm gonna start trying to make the neck and the head of my dinosaur. I'm not sure if the base is strong enough to support a long, long neck, but I'm going to try and see. I'm going to attach this head to the neck and hope that it doesn't tip the whole dinosaur over. Oh no! My dinosaur keeps tipping over. Oh, I think it's top heavy. That means that the top part is heavier than the bottom so it's tipping over so I'm gonna do some things to make the bottom of it heavier so I'm gonna add some pieces down here that could be like feet but more than feet they are weights to hold down the sculpture. Trying to get my dinosaur to balance and stand up is a fun challenge. I think what this sculpture needs is a big heavy tail to balance the head and the neck. After finishing my dinosaur sculpture, I took some pictures of it from different angles. Remember, an interesting sculpture will look different at each angle. I also chose a white background so it wouldn't distract from my sculpture. I have some students who really love elephants, so I wanted to do this project using elephant shapes. I used recycled cardboard again and you can see the back of the shapes here. This time I planned out all the shapes I would need to make an elephant. The trunk, the ears, the feet, head, and then I cut out these pieces. Then I marked where I'm going to cut each piece with a red marker. These are the slits where I'm going to attach and connect all the parts of the elephant. You can see here I used those long pieces to make um, kind of a ring or an eye shape and that is the foundation for this sculpture. My elephant sculpture is a little bit simpler and a little bit more stable than the dinosaur and it didn't take too long to make sure that it could stand up all by itself. Here are the pictures of my finished elephant sculpture and I have one last animal to show you how to make. This is going to be a salamander, which is a very simple shape, and the entire sculpture will only be four pieces of cardboard. So this might be a good place to start if the other ones looked a little bit complicated. This sculpture will have four pieces, a body with a head, a separate head, and these two arch shapes, which will make the four legs. This piece of cardboard that I'm cutting came from a box of crackers. These are the four shapes that I cut out. And here are the red lines that show where the slits will be. The head and legs will slide onto the body. Here's my finished salamander and I have another picture so you can see the cracker box that I used. I hope you really enjoyed learning a little bit about Alexander Calder and seeing three ways that you might use cardboard to make an animal sculpture of your own.
I hope you also get to do this project at home, and if you do, you could take some pictures and email me because I would love to see your artwork. See you next time. Bye-bye.